what I'm angry at uh, is the misdirection of a news organisation, once thought to be one of the greatest news yeah. organisations in the world, yeah. which has got it so wrong on the weather that it's embarrassing. They send their climate editor, um, what's his face? Justin Rowlett. Justin Rowlett to Alicante. A fanatic. To report on how terrible it is He's in Spain. He's a fanatic. When it isn't actually terrible in Spain. He's a fanatic. <clears throat> they got not, it wrong. Not, on Nigel Farage, yeah. they're still not uh, apologising for that, even yeah. though they're now being urged to apologise for it. Uh, and, of course, we haven't even mentioned the Hugh Edwards debacle, which is still ongoing as an investigation. Yeah, let's look at Justin Rowlett. He's just returned uh, from the latest of his jet journeys. Uh, this one, 1,800 miles of eco-wrecking passenger plane flight to Spain and To back, Alicante, yeah. Uh, to lecture us about climate change. But mm. that means that he deposited 0.32 tonnes of carbon carbon emissions. Right. Uh, and now the people, the lefties who were defending him at the weekend said, well, he didn't charter the plane, he just got on a plane it was yeah, going yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So apparently the new climate policy is fine. As long as you're going on a plane that's already scheduled to go, that's yeah, not against well, wait climate. Wait a second though, Mike. Why won't the state broadcaster, the BBC that we pay for, people have been phoning and saying, did Justin Rowlett, the climate editor, fly mm. to Spain by an eco-busting jet? Yes. They won't say. Of course they won't. They won't say. And uh, why does the BBC, do you know, so he's the climate editor. They've got nine full-time climate journalists. Nine. All of whom will be on about yeah. 80,000 And they've also got year. plenty of reporters in Spain who probably could have tootled along to Alicante to say, oh, by the yeah. way, Justin, it's not as hot as you said it was. They're spending a fortune mm. uh, for these nine journalists to climb onto aeroplanes, fly around the world, right. M mess up the environment, and then when they get there, lecture us about climate change. I know, amazing. It's a sort of hypocrisy yeah. seems to be the word. Breaking news from Ian, who's tweeted me to say it was 13 and a half degrees Celsius in Lincoln at 9am today. <laughs> Ah, ferocious. Phew, what a scorcher. Scary, scary. Mm. By the way, talking to the BBC, uh, Simon Jack, the business editor and the BBC, yes. still have not apologised for getting that report on Nigel Farage's bank accounts completely wrong. Simon Jack wrote on the BBC uh, website mm. for BBC licence payers that Nigel Farage bank account was not being shut mm. by Coots because of his political views, but purely because he didn't have, he enough, didn't have money. enough money. That was not true. No. It was utterly, yes. utterly wrong. And he has, and and he still has no put apology. Out, bizarrely, he put out a strange and odd statement on Friday morning just about 10 o'clock in the morning, which didn't actually clarify anything. Well, no, he's, he's Blamed the headline uh, that he said should have been clearer. Yeah, well, no, but the headline... No, the story was wrong. What he said was, uh, the headline should have said uh, that Nigel Farage's accounts were closed for purely financial reasons, a source has told the BBC. Yes. So he seems to be saying that as long as a, see a source tells you something that is utter, utter garbage, right. but as long as you got told yeah. it, that's OK. Yeah. Uh, a. Simon... That's not how journalism works. That's not works. how journalism works. It's how they used to do it at National Enquirer yeah. uh, in America yeah. during the 70s when they were in their heyday. And basically what they used to have was a fact-checking department and they would ring up the journalist and say, now this guy that you spoke to who uh. said that you... Um, uh, that he saw um, as, as a flying saucer and he was abducted by aliens. Um, have you got his name and address? And they went, yeah. And they went, that's fine then. And then they would run it as if it was a true story. And they still I do was it abducted. like that. That's you how they three, do it. Get three of them. Well, apparently, uh, now, the BBC, the story, well, apparently yeah. now the BBC's run like that. Marvelous. Yeah, I mean, that isn't how it goes, Simon. You, you, you get given a piece of information... Uh, and then you check it yes. out. You don't just go, thank you, I'll write that. Yeah, I I'll mean, publish it. it's ridiculous. They owe us an apology, and if not, what has happened to the BBC News Department? Yes. It now feels entitled to run completely erroneous stories, completely wrong, and not apologise. And according to the Telegraph this morning, um, there's even more banks under sort of scrutiny now. Metro Bank, Yorkshire Building Society, and American Express are all now uh, under scrutiny by uh, various watchdogs yeah. because they've been closing accounts without really giving people yeah. a reason. Uh, and Richard Tice has been all over this as well. Yeah, and the, you know, the, that West, there's a Facebook group of 10,000 people yeah. who've had right. their accounts closed by Nat West for political reasons. So the idea that, uh, you know, it's one in a million and Nigel Farage is a very extraordinary, unique case. Not true. They're doing it left, right and centre yeah. and they've got to be stopped. And